All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an approximate analysis of statically indeterminate frames that only has gravity loads. And what we're gonna be do doing is an example problem. And what we wanna do is approximately determine the moment diagram of girders and support reaction. We can do this approximation approach, but sometimes these approaches are very, very inaccurate. So at best, they are approximating or really a, just a fancy way of guessing. And the ways that we go about approximating are to estimate or guess where we think the inflection points are gonna be based on how we might model the structure in a very simple way, like fixed fixed beams versus simply supported beams. And then another possible way is just to estimate member end moments based again on what we think the boundary conditions of a member are doing. So let me show you what the frame looks like here first. All right, so here is what my structure looks like. It's got moment connections here at all the dark squares. Oh, let me give them some labels. We'll call this A is fixed, a F is fixed, and I have moment connections here at B, C, D, and E. The way that I'm going to do this approximation is about by guessing points of inflection. And when I guess my points of inflection, I'm gonna say that member C, D, for instance, is somewhere between a fixed fixed beam and a simply supported beam where C and D can rotate slightly. In any case, that's the kind of approximation that I'm gonna use to guess where the inflection points are gonna be in member C, D. But a lot of that depends on the stiffness or the moment of inertia of this beam and the length of the beam with respect to the moment of inertia and length of the columns that are attached to the member, the horizontal member. All right, so here, when I look at points of inflection, I'm, I'm thinking of this as something in between a fixed fixed beam and a simply supported beam. So here I've got uniformly dif distributed loads. I'm gonna go ahead and draw for you the moment diagrams associated with a fixed fixed beam and a simply supported beam. So here's the moment diagram for a fixed fixed beam with the uniformly distributed load. And now I'll draw one for a simply supported beam, which all of you I suspect know how to do. And here it is for a simply supported beam. And what we were saying is that this member CD is something somewhere in between, somewhere in between this right here. And if I notice, I'll notice, I'll see that my inflection point is here and here for this moment diagram. And if I, if I went through the calculations, you would find that this right here from the shear diagram, you could locate this. And this is 0.21 times L and the loading is symmetrical and same, this is 0.21 times L as well, right here. Whereas in the simply supported beam, boom, this is zero and this is zero. And so I would say that my inflection point for member CD is somewhere in between zero and 0 0.21. And now where that is also, again, depends on the stiffness of the columns and the beam that's that are connected at those joints. So we don't know what these stiffnesses are. So our best guess, again, is an approximate and I think something reasonable might be to take an average of these two inflection points. So I would say that the average of 0.21 and zero, you know, the average of those two inflection point locations is about 0.1L. So I'm going to assume inflection points at 0.1L. And so that means I'm going to introduce in my structure essentially a hinge because the hinge has a moment that's zero and can transfer normal and shear force across that hinge. Now, before we proceed with the analysis, let's just take a look real fast and determine how many degrees of indeterminacy there would be in this structure. And so if I looked at this structure right here, and if I cut it all the way through it right down the middle, I'd have, let's see, three unknowns from this cut, three unknowns from this cut, and then I would have three reactions here and three reactions here. That's three, six, nine, 12. So my number of unknowns is 12. And because I cut right through, I have one body on the left and then one body on the right. So I have two bodies or two free bodies, if you will, and three equilibrium equations each. So my number of equations is equal to two times three, which would be six. And that would tell me 
that my structure is statically indeterminate to the sixth degree. So essentially what I need are six assumptions to make this thing analyzable in an approximate way. Is analyzable a word? Ay, who knows, right? It's right here. So I'm gonna tell you right now that in my structure, I'm gonna introduce, to make this approximate analysis happen, I'm gonna introduce a hinge, boom, boom, at this length right here at 0.1L and 0.1L. So that's already two assumptions. And then I'm gonna also introduce a hinge here, boom and boom, and that's also 0.1L, 0.1L, and I'm furthermore, I need, that's four assumptions, right? And so now I, I probably need two more assumptions, and my two other assumptions are that the normal force in member CD is zero, and the normal force in member BE is zero. And now I'm ready to go and analyze this structure. All right, so let's go, let's go ahead and start with member CD. So we'll start with this top member here. So if I cut out member CD, so I'm going way over here again. And if I just cut it out, so here I say whoosh, whoosh. That's right, sound effects, son. <laughs> cut it out and I have member CD, boom. So here, here's that cut for member CD. And I'm gonna draw member CD across, bam. And here, good, with the loading. And I place hinges at 0.1L. All right, and the length of this was 10 meters. So that would mean that this hinge is located at 0.1L. 0.1L, which is one meter each. And the whole length is 10 meters, so this makes the center part eight meters. So now, if you will, I'm gonna cut at the hinges. So I'm gonna cut through here and here, and my beam will look like this. And here at these cuts, if you will, for the hinge, these cuts through the hinge, I, I'm only gonna have a normal and a shear. And I already know that we made an assumption that the normal inside these members is zero. So I don't even have to draw that in. And I will have shears here. I will draw this one. Oh, I'm wrestling here. I'll just say, I'll, I'll draw this one up. And this one technically for obeying internal sign convention would be down here. But you know, and I know, that when I solve for equilibrium here, this thing should be pointing the other way. But we'll talk about that in a second. And I could use equilibrium. For instance, I'll take moments about this point right here and I could find this shear or reaction, if you will, right here, which I'll find that it's actually pointing up. And I also notice from symmetry that this is five times eight. The resultant of this distributed load is 40. And I have, sim I have a symmetrical beam and reactions. So that means that my shear on the right is just 20 kilonewtons pointing up and my shear on the left is 20 kilonewtons pointing up. So I, could, I just did that by symmetry, nothing complicated. Once I've inclu included these inflection points, everything else is just statics. And that's the beauty of this approximate analysis. Here, I have the 20 kilonewtons. If I wanna focus on this portion of the diagram, so now I'm gonna draw this portion of member CD, and I have equal and opposite from this side to this side, so this is 20 kilonewtons going down. I have a distributed load of five kilonewtons per meter. And the length of this segment here is one meter. And here at the face of the cut, I have an internal moment and a shear, which I will draw. Let's see, I will draw like this. Here's my moment at the end of member CD. So I'll call that MCD. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. And I'll have a, ver I'll call this a shear V on the left side, VCD like this. Why not, okay? And from again, from equilibrium equations, I can determine these two uh, these two internal loads at the end of member CD. And here again, from some of the forces in the vertical, boom, VCD minus five kilonewtons per meter times one meter minus 20 kilonewtons equals zero. And that would tell me VCD is 25 kilonewtons and it is pointing upwards here in this drawing. And then I could sum moments about the cut as well, sum moment about point C and this would tell me, I'd have, let's see, negative MCD minus five kilonewton per meter times one meter for the resultant times the arm. So the resultant is here. The arm is 0.5 meters times 0.5 meters minus 20 kilonewton times the arm of one meter equal to zero. And this would tell me MCD is equal to negative 22.5 kilonewton meters, which really just means that this is 22.5 kilonewton meter magnitude and it should be going opposite of the way I drew it. So boom, like that right here. 
So if I wanted to correct or redraw these with magnitudes and directions only, I would have, and boom, those are my end internal loads for member CD. And by symmetry, I know that on this side right here, I know that this should also be 22.5 kilonewton meters, and this should be 25 kilonewtons going upwards. Or you could solve it by you know applying the equilibrium equations on the entire structure or going through the same process here and then going to the right here. What we did was we found the end moments and the end shears for member CD. 